In this video, I'm going to be installing a P3 digital gauge out of my March 7 Golf Sport Wagon. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Obviously you know a little bit about what the topic is we're talking about today, but first of all, some exciting news is that I do plan to be installing my IS38 Turbo this weekend if everything goes to plan. But that's one of the reasons why I installed this P3 digital gauge into the Mark 7 as well. Just because before I go to the IS38 from the IS12, I'd like to at least have some sort of data to be able to take a look at and make a not subjective decision, but I'll also make one of those too on how much better the car is with the IS38 or fingers crossed, we hope it's gonna be. So the P3 Digital Gauge is an amazing product. If you don't know what it is, go take a look at it because it's a really slick piece of kit for your car. The gauge that I purchased from P3 is the digitally connected OBD2 gauge. This gives you a ton of different readouts on the March 7, everything from air fuel ratio to exhaust temperature to coolant temperature. There's a programmable shift light, your speed, and the things I really picked it up for were things like the boost gauge, the intake air temperature, and the zero to 60 timer. So now that I have this P3 gauge installed in the car and it's been a couple weeks since I've done the install, I can say one thing about this product. It is the most flawlessly executed aftermarket integration that I have on the dad wagon. It looks amazing and it works really, really well. And it's a tool that I just can't wait to learn more about how I can get more out of it and understand better the data that it's providing me. I've had a ton of fun with the zero to 60 timer so far, as well as monitoring the boost and being able to hopefully compare that to when I get that bad boy installed into the car. So let's jump into the install and I will catch up with you guys afterwards. All right, so this is by no means a required step, but one I think you should take, I connected the control box to the gauge and then plugged it in the OBD2 sensor and started the car to make sure that the gauge was functioning properly before I even started this install. Now let's start by accessing the vent using your trim removal tool to pull off the bezel that holds that vent in place. Now by gently pulling on the vent, go ahead and remove that entire assembly from the car. So grab your trim removal tool again and gently, very gently, use it to pry against the side of the housing to remove the louvers of this vent. Uh, once you get it removed from the one side, you'll be able to easily pull it out. Now in this clip, don't freak out. I am not using these side cutters to cut through the louvers that are still in place. I'm simply using it to get a grip and put even pressure on the side that hold each of these louvers in and push it away without prying on these and risking snapping the plastic. So just gentle pressure and then sliding side to side to help pull those out. There's going to be six connection points overall that hold these louvers in place. So now that you have those louvers removed, you'll be able to get the P3 digital gauge in place or the digital display. I like to start by putting the smaller side in place and getting those pins in the frame of the vent and then start to work on the far side or the larger side uh, by simply pulling back on the frame of the vent just a little bit to get those pins set. Now grab the cable that connects the display to the control box and go ahead and feed it through the channel that's the furthest to the left of the vent. Once you have that cable pulled all the way through the vent unit, go ahead and start to get the frame in place. Uh, when you're doing that, make sure that you get the louver control bar or the little slidey thing placed over the center of that channel to make sure it is actually controlling the side to side direction of the vent. Once you've ensured the alignment, go ahead and snap it all the way back into place. Rather than just relying on force, I chose to use the trim removal tool to lift out that side frame a little bit to help push it back into place. Here I'm just checking to make sure that the on off switch of this vent isn't being interfered by the cable and I had it truly laying flat. Let's grab that trim removal tool and remove the side cover to the dash by simply prying. There's three clips that hold this in place, one that's towards the top of the dash, one that's to right towards the driver, and one that is right at the bottom. 
I struggled with this a little bit more than I probably should have. Next, remove the dash cubby that's right above your left knee when you're driving. Go ahead and pull that down and then squeeze on the sides with quite a bit of pressure to get that to be removed. I have a custom switch mounted here, so ignore the step of prying that out. Now grab the display cable and go ahead and run that through the dash vent area and bring it out the side where you remove that side dashboard panel. Now grab the OBD2 table that will connect to your gauge control box and go ahead and plug that into the OBD2 port and then take those cables and gently run them up through the dash cubby area and then out through the side panel. Now that all the cables are run, I'm doing another quick check to make sure that I didn't damage anything before I start to button everything up. Now it's just a matter of some cable management. So I folded up the digital display cable and used a zip tie to hold those together. Then I curled up the OBD2 sensor cable and also used a zip tie or a twist tie on that to hold it in place. Now is the time to mount the control box. Here, I'm using some double-sided tape to do that. I would probably suggest using some Velcro tape, so that way if you need to remove this. Uh, but I didn't have any available, so double-sided tape did the trick. Now go ahead and put the driver's side cubby back in place and just make sure that there's no interference with the new cables that you're running pretty much behind it. All right, let's get everything put back together. So first, I'm gonna put the bezel onto the vent itself. Once I get that snapped into place and make sure everything's clicked in, I'm going to go ahead and slide it back into the dash. And then one more time, because I'm just paranoid that I'm going to crimp a wire or break something, I'm going to test to make sure it's all working before I put the side cover back on. And maybe the best part of this job, taking off the protective film over the digital display. And really the final step is go ahead and snap that side dash cover back into place. So that wraps up the install. It's all super easy, very straightforward, and for the most part, plug and play. It just takes a little creativity with the wiring and getting it organized afterwards, and just be delicate with any of the trim pieces because you don't want to break those because sometimes they can be a pain to source. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to share a couple of zero to 60 runs with you and how that works on it, and then also share with you, uh, you know, some boost monitoring and how the recall function works on it. So hopefully that shows you a little bit about how the zero to 60 timer works on the P3 gauges as well as the peak recall. The peak recall is a really cool functionality that I'm still excited to test out some more, but it allows you to keep your eyes on the road and not on the gauge and then check what you need to check later because the peak is really what we want to know about most metrics. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below or any comments, feel free to share those too. Like this video if it's helpful at all. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.